And we're going to kick it off with something that just happened right before we went live, which is Colin Moriarty. Uh, I'll, I'll show you on my screen here. Colin gets a text from uh, or a tweet from PAX that says, Hi, Colin. Apologies, but we unfortunately have to remove your panel from PAX West 2019 schedule. So I guess PAX had promised him a panel had made it clear that he could let his audience know that he was coming to PAX to do a live panel. And then from there, it just kind of, I wouldn't say it spiraled. That's wrong because Colin's not very, uh, he doesn't kind of go off half cocked from what I know. He's a pretty even keeled fella, but he's kind of like going, what the fuck? I've got a bunch of fans of Colin's last stand who have made plans to come out and see us. They've bought tickets. They've got hotels. And now for a reason that PAX is not revealing to Colin, they've just absolutely kicked him off his fucking panel. That's, that's all the news we've got. I bring it up because a lot of people on Twitter are like, well, yeah, you know why this is. And I'm like, no, I don't. I would get it if Colin was like the video game version maybe of Milo Yiannopoulos because that's what people are kind of implying. They're kind of implying, oh, well, you know, he's super fucking conservative. I'm like, well, he, he has a conservative, one could potentially even say libertarian bent, but he's not out there suggesting that uh, gay people shouldn't be allowed to, to live and everybody but the white Aryan race should leave America. That's not Colin. It's not, not, Colin's just a, he happens to be a conservative dude for the most part, but he's seems compassionate, kind, thoughtful. So I don't really understand why. And people are saying, oh, well, it's because, you know, he stirred some shit. And then if you look at my screen right now, this one guy tweeted to him, this was hilarious and terrifying. This guy, Jack, says, by the way, if you see Colin Moriarty at PAX West and accidentally spill an entire milkshake on him with his back, when his back is turned, that would be a good thing. I'm like, what, what has occurred with this guy? Let me see if the chat can educate me a little bit because I'm not sure why in the world that they would disinvite uh, my pal Colin Moriarty, who's never been, I can tell you my experience with Colin, never been anything but nice and thoughtful and uh, a good dude. Neo Gray Fox says the industry is left. Colin identifies as conservative. People call him a Nazi anyway. Okay, but Neo Gray Fox, I can understand that there are some morons out in the world that do that, but PAX is a professional company. I just don't buy this. You're basically suggesting to me that all it takes is somebody to just pick up the phone and say, hey, PAX, Colin is a Nazi. I think he's too conservative to have a panel. And they're like, yeah, no problem. We'll fucking kick him off. Thanks for the call, buddy. I mean, that's basically what you're suggesting. There has to have been something that at least someone is claiming Colin did, which again, a claim is not evidence of truth. Troy says if they did that because of his politics, that would be so lame. I mean, look, man, you guys know me. I'm far left, super progressive. I don't want to see Trump in office. I believe in a lot of far left uh, progressive policies, but I still have what, what I like about Colin Moriarty is he's the kind of conservative that I can have a conversation with. We may not agree on a number of things, but it's like, oh, you just happen to be conservative. This is not some guy who's like a raging Alex Jones character. He's just happens to be fucking conservative. Captain Hogwash says he's the closest thing to Milo in the far left games industry, but that's not saying much. He's barely right wing. Yeah, he's mostly a centrist. I absolutely agree. Yeah, this guy says, well, look, he says, man, what's wrong with people? Says Troy, pouring stuff on people behind their backs. Because, yeah, he looks like a grown ass man. He's got a kid on his shoulders. So he looks like a father. The guy who tweeted Colin and said, hey, so hopefully somebody will spill a milkshake on him. He looks like a fucking grown ass man with, a, with a, who's a dad. And he literally is suggesting that uh, it would be fantastic, he says, if that just constantly happened at all times he was on the show floor. That would be a fantastic thing. I'm just like, what? What? Your average psych says it's probably related to branding and behind the scenes concerns regarding sponsors or other panels backing out. Again, I understand that if you're talking about a guy who has historically uh, or even once been like, hey, Colin said this awful thing and it's staying with him, but he hasn't. I follow the guy. I follow his Twitter. I've been on his show a couple of times since when he was at Beyond and then now with his own show. I've never, he's never said anything like that. Perception can sometimes be people's reality, says Enraged Gamer, if there's enough people rallying for a specific narrative. Well, you know what? I would absolutely expect a professional company like PAX to be better than that and be able to go, you know what? Fuck you. We're not going to be taken hostage by a left or right agenda. We are here to serve our gaming audience and we will make sure that we 
assess the situation. Now, in Pax's defense, maybe they have. I don't want to jump the gun here. Maybe there's something that uh, that Pax knows that I don't know or that you don't know. And it's like, oh, shit, man. Okay, I understand. I don't think so. But I'm just saying, give him the benefit of the doubt until they say something. But it doesn't sound like Colin to me, man. Dave Carr says he thinks it stems from the lame joke that everyone lost their minds over. Okay, if you don't know what Dave's talking about, uh, Colin used to be a really meaningful member, a founding member, but he was also, I think, an important part of the chemistry of the Kind of Funny crew. And I think his absence remains missed. I still like Kind of Funny. I listened to their show yesterday, Kind of Funny Games Daily. I like Greg Miller. I like the Tims. I like that show. But ultimately, Colin was an interesting voice to throw into that crew. And the show is weaker without a voice like that. So on International Woman's Day or whatever it was, he just tweeted out, ah, peace and quiet, International Woman's Day or Day Without a Woman is what it was. It was it was the Day Without a Woman Day. And uh, he, he, he tweets out uh, peace and quiet. It was stupid. It was kind of funny. Get it. But it was it was kind of funny. It wasn't offensive. I'm sorry. You can make fun of tropes about women without it being, without it being anything other than just like, oh, you know that old trope that women like to nag? Yeah, it's unfortunate that that's a trope. And hopefully over time that will go away because it's not true and it's offensive. Sure. But Colin's not like saying women are bad or weaker or less worthy. He's just kind of playing on an old fucking... I don't know. I don't want to fucking relitigate this thing. It's just the point is, it's like if people are still upset about that, I'm as liberal as they come. And I could take that for what it was, which was kind of a corny, outdated old man joke that, yeah, you probably should grow out of saying things like that because they, they really don't have a place anymore if you actually do really respect women. But I think Colin respects women. It's just a dumb fucking joke. Fox says, I'm guessing Pax buckles under the pressure, just like kind of funny never set out to defend him. I don't want to speak about kind of funny like that. I don't know what went down at kind of funny. I've heard Colin's side. I've heard a little bit of Greg's side. It's none of my fucking business, man. I don't know if they didn't defend him. Maybe they were getting to the point where it's like, you know what? This isn't working anyway. You never really know what happens in in places like that. Harry says, taking your friend out of the equation. Do you think tossing milkshakes is an acceptable form of nonviolent protesting? Well, let's be clear. I wouldn't call Colin my friend. Not to say that maybe if conditions were right, we wouldn't be friends. I don't know him that well. He's, he's a colleague acquaintance who I am fond of. I'd say that. Do I think tossing milkshakes is an acceptable form of nonviolent protesting? No, I don't because I don't think it's nonviolent. You're basically invading someone's space. You are causing them physical discomfort. So I don't. And, I, and more importantly, for what Colin Moriarty said, of which I don't think anybody even knows at this point, no, I don't think it's acceptable. Goff says, in the new world of advertising, it's all about having your brand brand safe. That's where kind of funny is right now. Advertisers flee at the slightest sign of trouble. Yeah, but most of these guys are making their money off Patreon. I know kind of funny and Colin, they they make some money off doing ads and stuff, but I have to assume most of their money is from subscribers. But look, I'm going to just say it about kind of funny. I like kind of funny. I like their shows. I like their hustle. I like their drive. Greg Miller is a real fucking talent. If, if, if look, if, if in 10 years, somebody said Greg Miller is going to have his own late night internet talk show. I say internet because who gives a shit about TV anymore? But if somebody were to say he, he one day he could be running like a, a, a late night with Seth Meyers or something. It wouldn't surprise me. He's, he's sharp. He's funny. He's quick. I dig the guy. But I don't think you're wrong. I think kind of funny is exceptionally vanilla these days. I think kind of funny is it's good. It's interesting, but it is exceptionally safe. And I have to assume that's conscious, but it it, it definitely for a 48-year-old guy, it's a little too PG for me. Okay.